Hello, everybody, and welcome. Happy Thursday to you. Today is Thursday, June 17th, 2021, and this should be a very brief live stream to demonstrate a very quick point. So welcome. I was going to do my creepy, scary music, the one y'all call Jaws music at the start of the show, but I decided I'll save the Jaws music for the exceptionally egregious cases, one of which we are going to be exploring here um, probably either this week or next week. And someone emailed me about it today. So shout out to that viewer. We will be covering that story. Whew. So hi, everybody. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the show. We're going to do this real quick. It shouldn't take that long. And I'm going to stick to it this time, I swear. I'm going to challenge myself to keep this eh, 45 minutes or less, 30 minutes or less is my challenge to myself. Okay. So welcome everybody. Welcome to the show. So tonight's topic, run Alice run on narcissist dangerous pranks. Okay. We've talked about narcissists and their pranks before, and I've expressed before how I really don't like pranks because I found that they're no longer harmless and that a lot of people seem to keep toying the line between really truly breaking the law and just having some harmless fun. So with that in mind, and with some of the things that we've seen lately in social media, I think it's important that we talk about this. And the main reason I want to bring this to you is because some of you may actually have a person like this in your life, and they may have done something similar like this to you before and said, oh, I'm so sorry. It was an accident. It was a joke. It was a prank, but it had really detrimental consequences to your life. Now, I'm not saying that a person can never make a mistake or have a legitimate accident like a sincere miscalculation and it was real and they are sincerely sorry and they would never do that to you on purpose and they would never do it again. That's one set of people, but there are another set of people in the world who do these things mischievously or mischievously. And then they say, Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to do that to you. My bad. My bad, right? So we're going to take a look at the story of Alice. I came across this a couple of days ago. Let me see if the date is on here. I don't see the date. Why don't they date their things? Yes, they do. It was dated Friday, June 11th, 2021. So we're going to take a look at that. Welcome everybody in the chat. It's good to have you. Now, before we go forward, I know we've been talking a lot about gender lately here on the channel. This is only gendered because the story is about a girl and a guy, but please understand that this could be between two girls, two female friends, and this could also be between two guys, two male friends, okay? And any combination in between. So please know that, um, and please don't think I'm saying, even though whew, these days I might not need to make that disclaimer, but I just want you to, to know that based on the fact that this is the thumbnail and it says run Alice run. This topic is for everybody because anyone could have a friend like this of any gender. So I want to make sure y'all know that. And with that said, let's read this. So, oh, sorry. One more warning. Welcome to everybody in the chat. As you come in for those who can't hear about other people's injuries, or hear about someone else getting hurt, or like hear the graphic medical details, you may not want to watch this show. This may not be the one for you. Um, but if you can, it should be fine. It's not too bad. I really can't handle that kind of stuff myself. And I was able to read the story. So you should be okay. But I did just want to go ahead and make that disclaimer for anyone who's squeamish is the word that I'm looking for. Squeamish. So this was in The Guardian. Friday, the 11th of June, 2021, experience, I broke my friend's leg, okay? Says, I stuck my foot out to trip her. I just wanted her to have a tumble so that we could laugh about it. Then I heard her screaming, right? So let's go. And this is not very long, y'all. 
And this is them. This is an actual picture of the people that this happened to. I don't know if this is before or after she broke her leg. I'm not sure. And it didn't specify anywhere in the article. So I don't know if this is before or after, but this is Alice and this is the person who tripped her when they were running. Okay, so let's look at it. it. Says it was a warm weekday evening in May last year when my friend Alice and I were on a long walk around the university campus in York. We had met on a uni trip to Michigan in 2019 when I was in my final year and Alice was a master's student. We gravitated towards each other because we both love books and speculating out loud about how odd the world is. I had brought a book of many plays that we were performing to each other as we walked just for fun. At one point, as part of the hijinks, Alice set off sprinting and I took it as an invitation to race. We were on a long stretch of pavement down a quiet residential street when I stuck my foot out to trip her. I just wanted her to have a tumble so we could laugh about it. She fell instantly and I kept on running. It was all part of the joke. But then I heard her screaming. I turned around and she was on the ground clutching her right shin. I thought for a second she must be kidding. There's no way she could have hurt herself that badly. But her face was contorted in pain and she was making this haunting wailing sound. I tried to call an ambulance, but was panicking so much that I kept dialing 911 instead of 999. A man who was walking down the street and had seen what happened came to see if we were okay. He called an ambulance as soon as he saw Alice. Within 10 minutes, it arrived. The paramedics had to pick her up and stretcher her into the ambulance. She was in a lot of pain. I kept repeating, please don't hurt her. Please don't hurt her. I went back to Alice's house to tell her fiance and her sister who she lives with what had happened. I remember saying to her sister that all I could think about was the sound of the screams. I had never heard anything like it before. The three of us drove to the hospital even though we knew they couldn't let us in because of COVID. We just sat in the car park reeling from shock. The morning after she was admitted, Alex texted me the x-rays of her right shin and kneecap splintered into pieces. My tibia and fibula are broken and my knee is shattered, said the message. Christ, I replied. Well, in a long line of things that are not good, that is sitting right at the top. I was trying to put on a brave face, but my heart was going like the clappers. I had no idea what to do. I went back to the hospital and brought her a big bag of chocolate buttons, which she doesn't even like, and a massive copy of Debt, the first 5,000 years, like a complete idiot. Further tests revealed that Alice's leg had shattered in eight places. She would remain in hospital for weeks and would probably be confined to her bed at home with a full length cast for months after that. Because of COVID, we still could not visit her. We didn't know how long she'd be in hospital or what the prognosis was. Alice treated the situation with levity, telling me not to worry because accidents happen, but also saying, you do realize I'm never going to pay for a pint again in your company. She spent three weeks in hospital. The day she got out, I went over to her house. She was on so much morphine that she was sweating and her head was wobbling. She had to make us leave the room when she needed to be lifted onto the commode in the living room to go to the toilet. I felt awful. I wanted to help, but not in a way that was motivated by guilt. If it were me in that situation, I wouldn't want someone constantly fawning over me, begging for forgiveness. Alice wouldn't want that either. So I wrote her a story, a kind of long form apology with Alice as the main character. It was my way of saying sorry without throwing myself at her feet in a sickening display of guilt. I read it to her in person six weeks after she got out of hospital while we sat in the sun in front of her garden. 
Alice is still recovering, and although she can walk again, she will probably have arthritis in her knee for the rest of her life. The experience has shown me how solid our friendship is, because if there was ever a reason not to speak to someone anymore, it's because they broke your leg. But we were able to make each other laugh throughout the whole ordeal, and that is something special. First of all, I would like to give myself a pat on the back because I think I read that straight through with no mistakes. Yeah, I can read. I can read. I told y'all I would prove it to you one day. I would prove to you that I could read. And I think I just did. I do. So let's let's break this down really quick. If it hasn't all jumped out at, out at you, obviously. Like when I was reading through this, I had that silent scream that I like to tell you guys about all the time. And welcome to everybody in the chat. It's good to see you and it's good to have you. I I don't know where to start, but I think I'll try first with just kind of pulling out the things that really stuck out to me from myself and then just kind of talking through my, my main points and getting out of here. So it starts off with these two young people. We never really get their age. I'm thinking maybe 19, 20-ish at most. And to me, that matters because for most people, that's when you are your healthiest, right? A lot of people hit their prime later in life, and that's great. But for a lot of us, you are your healthiest, your strongest, your most vigorous at this age. So two young people both go to school. They met, obviously not dating. They're just friends, right? And he brings over a book of plays that they're acting out. And they were acting him out and just having fun. She takes off running. Now, here's the first interesting thing to me. She took off sprinting and he said, I took it as an invitation to race. And here's what I don't know. What I don't know is, because it says as part of the hijinks, Alice set off sprinting and I took it as an invitation to race. So what we don't know is, was that like part of the play? Like did the character in the play take off running? Like is tripping the person in the like in the play? Like we don't know that. And even if it was, why would you trip your friend when they don't have on a helmet? They don't have on knee pads, shoulder pads, nothing. Even football players wear all that stuff to prevent injury when they trip each other on purpose on the football field. You can't just go knocking people at full speed or at top speed with no protection and expect good results. What if she had hit her head? So she broke her leg, but what if she hit her head though? Cause it said that they were walking down concrete. Where was it? Something about a lonely street. Uh, oh yeah, we were on a long stretch of pavement down a quiet residential street when I stuck my foot out to trip her. So it's not like they were in grass. Not that that matters, you guys. I want to be clear about that. But to me, it would definitely make a difference if you were in like thick, lush, plush grass versus concrete. Like what? Like, does that freak anybody else out but me? So we were on a long stretch of pavement down a quiet residential street when I stuck my foot out to trip her. Like just straight up. Not an accident. What, he didn't say it was part of the play. Just running, running for fun. You stick your foot out to trip her. Two adults. These are adults. Okay. I just wanted her to have a tumble so we could laugh about it. Now I'm just going to ask the chat for anyone who's here, everyone who's here. Which one of you and don't be shy, would enjoy being tripped if you're running at top speed. Because I imagine she wasn't jogging. He said she was sprinting. So that's pretty fast. So I just want to know which one of you would actually enjoy, hit, hit one if you would enjoy being tripped at top speed while running. Because maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the one who doesn't know how to have fun anymore. You know what I mean? Like may, maybe I'm the one who needs to loosen up a little bit. So they're on this street. She takes off running. He runs after her and his decision when he caught up to her was to stick his foot out to trip her. Now, probably a year or two ago, this was on my community tab. And I think I've 
it might actually still be up, but I may have removed it. Um, there was this girl walking down the street with her friend. And as a city bus starts to come by, she pushes her friend off balance. And her friend, did her friend hit a car or go into the street? I don't remember. All I know is it was a near miss. It was a near miss. If it is on my community tab, it's way down towards the bottom. Um, Cause it was like a year or two ago. But I remember saying at that time that that girl needed to be brought up on attempted murder charges. You just try to kill her. Because if I recall correctly in that video, she looked, she looked really quick. Like she looked and saw the bus and then bumped her friend into the street, calling it a prank. You see what I mean? So anyway, so now she's falling. She fell. He keeps on running, right? But she's on the ground screaming, clutching her right shin. And then here we have a little bit of narcissism come out where he says, I thought for a second she must be kidding. There's no way she could have hurt herself that badly. But her face was contorted in pain and she was making this haunting wailing sound. So in other words, running at top speed, you trip her. She falls and starts screaming. And your first thought is, oh, come on. Yeah, the chat says some friends are really your enemy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, your first thought is, oh, come on. Ah, come on. There's no way I could have hurt you. That. There's no way she could have. Oh, you know what? I just realized something. There's no way she could have hurt herself that badly. So in other words, yeah, you probably hurt yourself this uh, just now. But I don't think there's any way you could have hurt yourself that badly. You see what I mean? So in other words, here, here's what someone who really didn't mean to or doesn't have a dark personality would think. Let's say for whatever reason, for some ungodly reason, they decide to trip their friend. Then their friend falls and starts screaming. Your first thought should be, oh my God, did they get hurt? Oh my God, did I hurt them? Oh no. Like that should be your first thought. Oh my God, did I just hurt you? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Did I just do, did I do that? Oh my God. You see what I mean? Not, oh, there's no way you hurt yourself that badly. You see what I mean? So I meant to hurt you, but come on, you I didn't hurt you that bad. Come on, like stop. You know what I mean? And it's now I didn't grow up with siblings, but it's my understanding that some siblings are real wicked like this. And a lot of siblings will hurt their brothers or sisters under the guise of, oh, that's just how siblings play with each other. That's just how boys play. That's just how girls play. Or he's a boy and she's a girl or she's a girl and he's a boy. And that's how they interact. And sometimes they hurt each other. Like sometimes that's what siblings do. I, I can't attest to that. I do not know. I do not have firsthand knowledge of it, but that's what I've heard. So I can only imagine how often this happens in people's households where one sibling maybe bends the other sibling's finger back and the other sibling screams and then starts crying and runs to their mom. And they're like, oh, come on, I didn't hurt you that bad. And then it turns out they actually broke their sibling's finger, like broke it, not sprained it, not strained it, broke it, needs a cast. So y'all have to watch out for this. I'm telling you, it's a sign. So then I know y'all thought I misread but I did not misread. It says, I tried to call an ambulance, but was panicking so much that I kept dialing 911 instead of 999. Now, listen, I don't know if like, I think they are from the UK. And what makes me think that is he says, he doesn't say the hospital. Like he often says she was in hospital. Um, I think he even said they met at uni. So that indicates to me, yeah, we met on a uni trip to Michigan. So I believe they're from the UK. So maybe in the UK, their 911 is 999. I don't know. I, fe I felt like that was a very weird detail. Um, maybe this happened in the UK. Did I miss that detail? Hold on one second. In York. Oh, you know what? Okay, I think I understand. I'm sorry. He thought he was in the United States, I guess. So he kept calling 911 thinking he was in the United States, 
but I guess in the UK, their emergency number is 999. So, ah, okay. It says, yeah, that's true. I'm from the UK, 999, not 911. Okay. Thank you. See, I'm glad I didn't just jump to conclusions and make assumptions. So, but still in the context of the story though, it's like, oh, you need help. Oh, uh-oh, oh, 911. Oh, uh-oh, 911. Oh, uh-oh, oh, uh -oh, um, oh, you're screaming. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, 911. Oh, is the Guardian UK? I don't know these things. I need to know these things. <laughs> I need a I need a researcher and a back end like producer. Um, but thank you. That's important to know. Um, yeah, you need help. Ah, oh, you're in pain. Oh, 911. Oops. Hang up. Oh, 911. Oops. Ah, what am I doing? 911. Oops. Ah. Oh, here finally comes a neighbor who can dial 999. So how much time was lost while you were fumbling with your phone or were you standing over her like a psychopath while she screamed in pain, stunned and like just sitting there, like looking at what you did, like kind of halfway happy, probably with a narcissistic smirk before a neighbor hears all the screaming, like what's going on? And then the neighbor calls 911. OK, so then when the paramedics get there, he's saying, please don't hurt her. Please don't hurt her. Yeah, he enjoyed it and is a sadist. Absolutely. Like, and you guys, have you noticed not once, not once so far have we heard an I'm sorry. So he didn't apologize to her right after she fell. He didn't apologize to her when the neighbor got there. He didn't apologize to her when the ambulance got there. Nothing. If he did, he didn't tell us. Like this, this like, <laughs> this is why I almost played my Jaws music. Maybe I'll play it on, on the outro when we leave because um, like, yikes, anybody? Like um, no one else is scared. Okay, just me. Okay, so please don't hurt her after he hurt her. Like in one of the worst ways available, you broke her leg, bro, her leg. So then he goes off to Alice's house to tell her fiance and her sister. And I'm just thinking to myself, fiance, why wouldn't he out there with you guys? Your fiance is out here. And listen, I'm not saying that men are supposed to control women, of course, after, especially after all the conversations we recently had. But what I'm saying is your fiance is out here prancing around in the park with some guy who just broke her leg. They're, they're they're quoting Shakespeare and running through the park and prancing and skipping. And in all of that, he like permanently hurt her. Like she'll probably never get over that injury. I mean, she will with physical therapy and things like that. But like, like y'all don't think that's weird. Would you let your fiance go prance in the park with someone of the opposite sex? Y'all are taking long walks around the park after dark, quoting Shakespeare, frolicking and in all that, you got your leg broken. And I'm not saying it's her fault. I'm just saying how weird. Like, that's very strange to me. So anyway, um, I thought this was very strange. This struck me as very odd. He said, I remember saying to her sister that all I could think about was the sound of the screams. I had never heard anything like it before. So it's almost like he's more focused on his experience of the whole thing than what this girl just went through. If I accidentally broke somebody's leg, I would be overwhelmed with guilt and shame. Like I would just be trying to figure out how am I going to pay for this? Do I need to get another job? Will my health insurance cover it? Like, can I somehow like by proxy, which I don't think you can. It would be nice if you could though. But all I would be trying to think is how can I make this right in every possible way? How can I make her life easier? What can I volunteer to do for her for the next year, year and a half, two years? Can I come do your laundry for you? Can I come cook for you? Can I clean your house for you? Any errand you need run? Like, I'll, I'll run that for you. You need groceries. I'll go get your groceries for you. Like, whatever you need, whatever I can afford, like, I will, that's where my mind would be. And I would probably actually be crying. <laughs> I would be crying because I would feel so bad. I would feel horrible, man. I, 
I wouldn't be thinking about the screams. Like I'm sure the screams would be in there somewhere, but my only thought would be, how could I do this to my friend? How did I manage to do this to my friend and hurt her or him in this way? I'm such an idiot. Like I, the way I would beat myself up would be like profound. Like that's what I would be thinking about. Not, I told her sister, I've never heard anything like it before. I'm surprised her sister didn't wail on you, start boxing you right in the living room. Like, how could you hurt my sister like this? You freak, you stuck your leg out on purpose. You're running top speed and you stuck her leg, your leg out on purpose to trip her. How do you know she didn't have like an old leg break from childhood? You know what I mean? That had healed, but it's my understanding they never truly heal all the way. I mean, maybe they do. I'm not a doctor. I've never studied that. Don't know. How do you know she didn't already have like a plate or a rod or something in her leg and could afford a fall? How do you know? This is what I mean by pranks. Like a lot of pranks make assumptions about people, make assumptions about their health, make assumptions about where they need to be. So if you do a prank that takes somebody off their schedule by 30 minutes an hour, how do you know that they could have they could afford that 30 minutes or an hour? How do you know they weren't on their way to work and couldn't afford to get dirty? You see what I mean? Or couldn't afford to fill in the blank. And you just think you're entitled to 30 minutes to an hour of their life because it's funny to you? You see what I mean? Most people don't know how to do good natured pranks. They almost don't exist anymore. Um, so anyway, Alice, um, her kneecap splintered into pieces. Her tibia and fibula were broken and her knee is, was shattered. Okay. Um, and then his response to her text was, well, in a long line of things that are not good, that's sitting right at the top. Like, oh yeah, the chat says, it sounds like he tried to get sympathy uh, from the sister. Let me just show it. Sounds like he tried to get sympathy from the sister for his trauma from the screaming, right? Like he's traumatized from the screaming, right? So she sends him a text, tells him the damage done. And he says, well, in a long line of th things, <laughs> And a long list of things that are not good, that's sitting right at the top. Where is the fiance in all this? Fiance didn't have anything to say about this. <laughs> the fiance didn't drag you to the front lawn for injuring his future wife in this way. Where were you? Where were y'all at? Where was everybody? Where was the sister? Hold up, time out. So the fiance and the sister are at home. Okay. So she's out taking long walks around the park, frolicking after dark and the fiance and the sister back home. Let me stay focused. This is not that video. So anyway, he said he was trying to put on a brave face, but his heart was going like the clappers. He had no idea what to do. Still no apology, by the way. No apology yet. If he did apologize, he didn't tell us. Okay. Now this part really, really bothered me. Says, I had no idea what to do. I went back to the hospital and brought her a big bag of chocolate buttons, which she doesn't even like. And a massive copy of debt the first 5,000 years, like a complete idiot. So, okay. You just broke your friend's leg. And then you bring her a treat that you know she doesn't like. Not something you didn't realize she didn't like. Something you know she doesn't like, but you brought that to her anyway. And you top it off with a book called Debt, The First 5,000 Years. After she breaks her leg and probably, I assume, had to go through some type of surgery to get all those splintered bone pieces and fragments out and things reset and rods and casts. And you buy her a book called debt, the first 5,000 years, girl, run, Alice, run, girl, Alice, run, girl, run, get this thing away from you, girl, get them away. Because this is supposed to be like some feel good piece, like a feel good story. Like, Hey, we're still friends after all of this. 
after I read this, all I could say was run, girl, run, run, girl, Alice, run, Alice. Because here's my question. If, if he hadn't broken her leg when he did this the first time, he would have done something similar again. And the second time it might've been something like stairs. So we were either, you know how sometimes people run up the stairs and like race, which is not safe. You really shouldn't do that, but people do it anyway. Some people do it as exercise, like they run up and down stadium stairs. So what if the two of you went to like an empty high school stadium to run the stadium steps? And you, you think it would be real funny to trip her on the way down or trip her on the way up, which you could still really hurt yourself falling up the stairs. Don't ask me how I know that. But what if that's what he thought was real, real funny that time? You see what I mean? Or let me think of another. Well, this actually happened to me. So this is a real life story. Driving down the street. This I was in high school. Driving down the street with my friend one day. I'm driving. My friend's in the passenger seat. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, she throws the car in neutral. And I've never heard an engine make a sound like that before ever. Probably because you're not supposed to be going at top speed when you throw the car in neutral. And I remember like slamming it back into drive going, what is wrong with you? Like I screamed at her, what is wrong with you? Are you trying to kill us? And she just laughed and laughed. She thought it was so funny. She thought it was the funniest thing ever. And I couldn't get over it. I was like, thank God it wasn't like raining or thank God any other, anything wasn't going on, but she just threw the car in neutral. Like what, did, what were your, what were your thoughts? Like, what was your goal with that? Were you trying to spin us out? Were you trying to flip us? What were you trying to do? So anyway, so this man brings her or her friend brings her some candy she doesn't like in a book called Debt, The First 5,000 Years as, a, as the beginning of his apology to her. Okay. So then further tests revealed that her leg had shattered in eight places. She was in the hospital for weeks, confined to her bed at home with a full length cast for months after that. Okay. So, and through all that, her response to him was, you do realize I'm never going to pay for a pint again in your company. Ha 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 ha. Like girl, uh -uh, Alice, no ma'am. Mm -mm. It's not, it's not, the quote unquote accident, it's the intent. He did it on purpose. And again, for anyone joining late, this is not intended to be gendered. It's just that the subjects of this particular story are a man and a woman. Please know that this can happen between two female friends. And this can also happen between two male friends and any friend combination in between. Okay. So please know this. All right. It just so happens that this happens to be a man and a woman. All right. So, you know, her form of kind of laughing it off is, well, you know, I'm never going to pay for anything in your company again, which, you know, if she really doesn't care, like she sincerely doesn't care. I mean, I, I guess, I guess that's fair, but Alice girl, no ma'am girl. No. Cause this is the type of person who discovers drugs and then decides that they're going to put something in your drink because they want to see you react and they just want to see you loosen up. They just want to see you have a good time. That's it. You know what I mean? They don't mean any harm. They just want to see you lighten up and loosen up and have a good time. You've been going through a lot. Then you drink your drink unknowingly and end up having some crazy reaction because you were allergic or you just had a bad reaction, whatever. They're those type of people. They're the type of people who bother with your food, things like that the type of people who throw your car in neutral when you're traveling at top speed, things like that. And I personally believe they're the type of people who often things go missing after they've been over. That's just my opinion though. And it actually reminds me, well, let's finish this out and I want to show you guys something. So he finally makes it over to her house. She's on tons of morphine, ha having to be lifted up to be put on the toilet and like an old lady, basically. He said he felt awful, but wanted to help, but not in a way that was motivated by guilt. Boy, you need to be motivated by guilt, shame, and everything in between until you ask yourself and find, find the answer to the question, why did I do that to her? Why did, 
why did I do that? Why would I do that? Why did that seem like a good idea? Why would I trip somebody on concrete? Why would I trip somebody, period? But why would I trip somebody on concrete? What went through my mind? Am I sick? That's what you need to be motivated by. So the way that he apologized to her is he wrote her a story in the form of a long form apology with Alice as the main character. Girl, if you don't get away from him, where is your fiance? Where is your fiance? I said, boy, if you don't get out of here with this story, this short story with my wife as the lead character after you broke her leg and ruined her life for at least the next 10 years or so, don't set foot on my front lawn again. Where is the fiance? So he write, he wrote her a story and made her the main character. And he said it was his way of saying sorry without throwing himself at her feet in a sickening display of guilt. You need to be washing feet. You need to be doing laundry, folding clothes, vacuuming, cooking, cleaning, walking dogs, if there are any dogs. Where is your fiance, girl? So anyway, he read it to her in person six weeks after she got out of the hospital while they sat in the sun of her front garden. Where is your fiance? She's still recovering. She can finally walk again. She'll probably have arthritis in that knee for the rest of her life. Then he finishes out with the experience has shown us, shown me how solid our friendship is because if there was ever a reason not to speak to someone anymore, it's because they broke your leg but we were able to make each other laugh throughout the whole ordeal. And that is something special. And I'm, I'm just like, what, what? And then it almost looks like this is the story that he wrote and Alice child, I don't know what's going on. Cause it says as told to Alice Wilson, let me see if they put their last name up here. Nope. Just says Alice. So I don't know if her last name is Wilson. I don't know if Alice Wilson is someone different. I don't know if this is the, the story that he told her to apologize. If this is the story that he told her to apologize, I didn't get the apology. I wonder how this affected her studies. Was she able to finish school? Was she able to finish her degree? Did she have to put that on hold while she tries to learn how to walk again because her so-called friend thought it would be funny to stick his leg out and trip her. Like, I was horrified when I read that. Like, I was absolutely horrified because I think what I expected to find was something to the effect of my friend and I were playing rugby one day or something. I don't know. What's a sport where you'd be kind of close? I was going to say tennis, but you're not that close with tennis. Um, I was expecting something like, I don't know. I can't even think of a situation where that would even happen. Maybe if y'all were dancing, there we go. Maybe y'all are dance partners and you accidentally took the wrong step and it caused her to trip and you broke her leg that way. Or this happens a lot. Maybe y'all were playing basketball and someone went up for an alley-oop and came down on your foot and broke their ankle. That happens all the time. So you were there while they went up for the basket. And when they came back down, they accidentally landed on your foot, broke their leg. Like to me, that's that's a real accident. Soccer, thank you. Soccer, you and your friend were playing soccer. I don't know what it's called in soccer. You went to steal the ball. I don't know. I don't know if you can do that in soccer. But you went to steal the ball or something. They went to take it back. Uh-oh, the legs got tangled. You accidentally gnarled and broke your friend's leg. That's an accident. That's an accident. Not you're playing Shakespeare in the park. They take off running and you think <laughs> your solution is to stick your foot out to trip them on pavement? Not in lush grass. Trust me, I've seen that lush, pretty, delicious grass. They weren't on lush, pretty, delicious grass. They were on pavement. Pavement, okay? So it made me think of this. Some of you remember this. I think I called this video, this live stream, the revised narcissism spectrum. 
one of the worst sound quality and one of the worst audio quality videos I've ever done. Very upsetting too, because I was actually really pleased with the way that content turned out. Almost redid the whole thing until you all pulled my chair back, you made me stand up and you made me back away slowly from the computer. And you told me that it's okay. And I don't need to worry about these things as much as I do. So I didn't, I took your advice. But anyway, this chart comes from that live stream. And for those who didn't see that stream, just to do a quick recap. So you have your four quadrants. At the top, you have harmless. At the bottom, destructive. Far left, unintentional. Far right, intentional, right? So if you were going to group them, the upper left quadrant would be harmless and unintentional, which would be your gnat. The upper, upper right quadrant would be harmless and intentional, which would be your imp or little demon. And I almost put him here because these are where your pranksters generally live. But when I kept reading, then you have your unintentional and destructive. Those are going to be your evil idiots. Then you have your destructive and intentional, which is pretty much the devil incarnate or the devil himself. So I was going to put him as an imp or a little demon because of the prankster issue. But the imps really don't cause harm. They're, they're really kind of annoying. They're annoying like the gnats a little bit, but they really don't cause real harm. It's intentional, but it doesn't cause as much harm as the destructive side of the quadrant does. So that's where your devil incarnate comes from. And that's where I place this guy because he did it on purpose. So there's your intentional. And it had a very destructive outcome. And then the letter itself really didn't contain an apology or any real understanding of what he had done or the impact or the magnitude that this is going to have on her life. He just said it all so matter of fact, like, yeah, she broke her leg in eight places. She'll probably have arthritis in her knee for the rest of her life, but just goes to show you how strong our friendship is. Like, yeah, it does sound predatory. It says, it sounds, I'm not sure what the INF is. Sounds like predatory for him to chase her down and trip her up. Exactly. Almost like it triggered a predatory instinct. She was running and it's like, don't you run away from me. I don't like that. That bothers me. That's so scary because I'm playful like that. Like I'm goofy. I'll, I'll take off running, but I wouldn't ever in a million years expect to be tripped. Like if anything, I would expect to be like caught around my waist, if that makes sense. So I've seen people do that. Like somebody playfully takes off running, guy runs after her, catches up to her, catches her around her, her waist, spins her around, and then they might fall to the ground together, maybe. But sometimes they stay upright. It all depends. You know, I've seen that kind of little harmless play, but I've never seen somebody purposely trip somebody. I don't even think you're allowed to do that in football, American football. You have to like tackle for real, right? Like you can't just, you can't trip people in American football, can you? Like you have to like dive for their ankles. Like I think you have to dive with your forearms and stuff. Someone will have to let me know, but I think you can't like, or maybe you can, I don't know. But it seems like so cheap. That seems very cheap to just run around tripping people. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be a lot of talent involved in that. Oh, it was a typo. Okay. I wanted to make sure I understood. But yeah, so would you guys agree? Would y'all place him in the lower right quadrant as devil incarnate? Or would you put him as imp, little demon? What would you say? So while you're looking at that, I'm going to see if I can find my song because I do think I want to play us out on. Um, I want to play us out. Actually, I have to take you off real quick. I want to play us out on on our scary music because I really do want this to kind of scare you. And again, I'm not humorless. I'm actually <laughs> really goofy and my sense of humor is kind of sort of out of control. But when I see things like this happen, it concerns me. I find it very scary because I think a lot of people would pick up on the feel good aspect of that and go, oh, look at that. Their friendship survived. Their friendship stood the test of time. And I'm like, um, uh, nah, she needs to gradually back away from that friendship and slowly terminate it because 
if he can be inspired to do that once, he can be inspired to do that again. And that's concerning. You know what I mean? He needs to do some exploration and some soul searching. Son, why did you do that? For what reason? Okay. So that's pretty much it. Look at that right at the 45 minute mark. I met my goal. I'm proud of myself. Um, I'm not going to do it after show. I'm just going to go ahead and close out. I'm just trying to find, I don't want to play it through the microphone. I want it to come through your speakers. So I'm going to have to bootleg this a little bit and y'all are just going to have to forgive me. I'm going to just put up an old thing, but then I'm going to slap a different thumbnail on top. And that's how we're going to work this out. And that's how we're going to close the show. So with that, you guys be safe out there, pay attention to these types of behaviors They're not innocent. Obviously, they're not harmless. They have a lot of consequences and they can be quite destructive. If you are interested in that little chart you just saw, I will link it to you. Um, It is in the Amazon Kindle store for 99 cents, which makes me laugh for some reason. So anyway, take care. We will talk again soon. Okay, bye.